Today, we're comparing the Apple iPhone 14 versus the Samsung Galaxy S23. Now, I know uh, I am putting my life in danger by making this comparison, but I've extensively used each of these phones. And today I'm gonna share with you my experience covering both the similarities as well as the differences between these two great phones to ultimately help you decide which is right for you. As always, I will leave the purchase links down in the description. But before we get started, I am doing a giveaway on this brand new iPhone 14 Pro. If you want a chance to win, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave a comment with your Instagram username, and then follow me on Instagram, where I will announce the winner on March the 12th. Okay, so to start, I always like to compare the prices uh, as it helps put things in perspective. And in this case, both the iPhone 14 as well as the S23 start at $799 or £849 for 128 gigabytes. When it comes to the design, both phones use aluminum and glass, but each take their own approach, where the iPhone 14 uh, uses glossy glass with matte aluminum on the frame, and the S23 uses a matte glass on the back uh, and a polished frame on the sides. I gotta say, comparing the design of both, uh, I think I slightly prefer the sharper look of the iPhone 14, but I must say the S23 is a little bit more comfortable to use in the hand, thanks to the slight curve uh, that you get on the frame, not to mention that that matte glass back not only looks and feels better, it is also much better uh, at resisting fingerprints. Looking at the backs of the phones, more specifically the camera modules, uh, you can see that the iPhone 14 uses a dual lens camera system, and this looks very similar to the previous iPhone 13, where the S23 has a triple lens camera system uh, and uses sort of an individual lens design. And overall, I would say I prefer the look here of the S23, also because the lenses are better protected uh, thanks to having a metal ring that goes around each lens. Now, don't worry, I have a very thorough camera comparison coming up very soon in this video. Uh, but in terms of the design, I prefer the camera module on the S23. When it comes to the weight, uh, they are very similar, though the iPhone 14 is a little bit heavier and you do feel this in the hand, I would say the 14 feels just a little bit more dense and this is something that I happen to like. Now, in terms of the water resistance, both phones are IP68 water resistant, meaning you can confidently use them out in the rain uh, and even go swimming with them if you're daring enough. Ultimately, these are both two really good looking phones, but I'd say I slightly prefer the design of the S23. Now let's turn to the displays. Both phones feature 6.1 inch OLED displays uh, and both are quite crack resistant, though at the same time have also become more prone to scratching. In fact, after just normal use, I've had scratches on both displays after just a matter of weeks. So I definitely recommend you use a screen protector and I'll be sure to leave my recommended screen protectors for both phones down in the description. Both displays are OLED and this means you get high contrast as well as a very high pixel count, making even finer or text easy to read. Anything you do from watching videos, uh, reading messages, or playing games all look great on both displays. But there are some key differences. So first, in terms of the color reproduction, I would say that the S23 is more vibrant uh, compared to the more neutral or lifelike colors uh, that you get on the iPhone 14. Now, when it comes to the brightness, uh, the S23 is technically a little bit brighter compared to the iPhone 14, though both are easily visible in the sun. But I'd say the biggest difference between the displays of these two great phones uh, is the refresh rate, where the S23 has a 120 hertz refresh rate, which is double the iPhone iPhone 14's 60 hertz. And this means that on the S23, any movement on screen, whether you are scrolling through words or swiping between your apps, is just extra smooth when compared to the iPhone 14. Now, how big of a deal is this? Well, here's how I see it. I think that if you're already used to 60 hertz on your current phone, uh, the 60 hertz display on the iPhone 14 will be just fine. However, if you're already used to the extra smooth nature of the 120 hertz refresh rate, your eyes have a funny way of getting used to this extra smoothness to then going back to 60 hertz, things just feel a little bit choppy uh, and nowhere near as smooth. All in all, I think it's 2023 uh, and it is high time for Apple to add a ProMotion or 120 hertz refresh rate display to all of their iPhones, not just the Pros. So all in all, when I compare the displays of these two phones, the S23 has the edge. Another big difference between these two phones is the approach to the selfie camera, where the iPhone 14 uses a notch, uh, which takes up far more display space compared to the S23's 
punch hole camera. Now, to be fair, the uh, iPhone's notch does enable Face ID, which is still the best face unlock in any phone. However, at the same time, uh, the S23 has that underscreen fingerprint sensor, which I would say is even faster than Face ID, and its effortless underscreen integration mean I ultimately prefer this approach to Apple's Face ID. When it comes to the cameras, these phones are quite different. The iPhone 14 features a dual lens camera, while the S23 has a triple lens camera, adding a telephoto lens. To compare the camera systems on these phones, uh, let's take a look at and analyze some real world examples of photos and videos taken straight from the phones. No settings adjustments and no edits. In general, I found the S23 to be more vibrant in terms of the colors uh, and also a bit brighter, particularly seen here when you look at the color of the sky and the grass, where the iPhone 14 is more true to life and is also a little bit sharper. You can see more detail in the water uh, as well as in the distant skyscrapers. I also found that the iPhone 14 has better dynamic range, as seen here, where it retains more detail in the shadows by the lower part of the building. However, the additional 3x telephoto lens that you get on the S23 allows for photos that you simply can't get on the iPhone. In terms of the skin tones, the iPhone 14 is more accurate in terms of its color, where the S23 does also add some skin smoothing. And this is more apparent here in the selfie, where you can see that my skin may look better on the S23. Uh, it is actually more true to life on the iPhone 14. Taking a look at a close-up shot here of this tree, uh, you can see that the iPhone 14 has slightly more of a natural bokeh, uh, where I found the S23 to look a little bit compressed at times, and the iPhone does also have better detail when we zoom into details on the trunk. However, if we look specifically at the ultra-wide lens, I found the S23's ultra-wide to be better than the iPhone, retaining more light and detail in the shots. Also, when it comes to indoor photography, I often prefer the S23, providing a more pleasing image overall uh, with better white balance. And then when it comes to the video, these are both great. The S23 is even more stable compared to the iPhone. However, I'd still say the iPhone is better overall in terms of the colors and sharpness, also more smoothly adjusting to changes in exposure. And finally, in terms of low light photography, the iPhone 14 once again retains more accurate colors, while the S23 manages to add even more light to the image. Now, in this video, you often hear me say the words uh, a bit or slightly, and that's because these camera systems are both capable of producing fantastic images and video. In fact, I would say these are more similar when compared to the iPhone 14 Pro Max versus the S23 Ultra. I'll be sure to leave that comparison video linked in the description. Now, at the end of the day though, I would say I slightly prefer the more natural photos and better video that come from the iPhone 14. Though I will say, I do miss that telephoto lens uh, that you get on the S23. But all of that photography and videography takes a lot of battery. So how do these two compare? Well, first on the iPhone 14, uh, I found myself getting around seven to eight hours of screen on time, meaning it can last me all day and evening with around 20% remaining. And this is pretty impressive. Now, how does the S23 compare? If you've seen my videos on the previous S22, you'll know that its biggest shortcoming is the battery life. So has the S23 fixed this? Well, the answer is yes. Thanks to having a slightly larger battery uh, and more so a more optimized processor, more in performance and longevity in a sec, uh, the battery life on the S23 is just as good as on the iPhone 14 with the same seven to eight hours of screen on time. And this is really great, uh, especially considering the sizes of these two phones. Now, when it comes to charging, uh, of course, Apple features MagSafe, which I find is a great way to easily align your phone on the charger uh, and also allows you to use things like your wallet accessories. Uh, but at the same time though, the S23 uses USB-C, which is of course a vastly standardized and superior port when compared to the Lightning. So all in all, when it comes to the battery performance, I consider this round a tie. Let's talk performance. Both the iPhone 14's A15 Bionic chip and the S23's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip, now optimized for Galaxy, perform really well. Whether you are switching between open apps, uh, editing photos or gaming, both phones feel snappy and keep up well. Now the iPhone has been this way for many years, but looking specifically at the S23, I found that compared to the S22, there to be far less uh, random glitches or lags. All in all, I'd say the experience on the 23 is far more smooth when compared to the S22. Still, on iPhone, Apple makes the hardware and the software, and this means you get an unmatched level of integration. 
and ultimately uh, the experience on the iPhone is still more fluid and cohesive overall, especially when you take into account how well the iPhone integrates into the Apple ecosystem. Now, both of these phones are big investments and they have to last. Now, Apple is known for its longevity, uh, providing anywhere from five to seven years of software support and updates. Now, in this case, the S23 has stepped up, now providing four years of software updates and five years of security updates. And it is great to see the industry catching up to Apple's longevity. Though still, you do get longer software support on the iPhone 14, meaning it ultimately will last longer. Plus, I also found that Apple iPhones do hold their value better compared to the uh, Galaxy line of phones, meaning you will get more money back if you plan to sell it in the future to then upgrade to the latest model. When it comes to repairability, I would say that neither phones shine in this department. Though on the bright side, both Apple and Samsung do offer battery replacements, which I would say is the most common component to replace over your device's lifetime. Pricing and availability will vary depending on your region, but in the US and the UK, Apple offers a battery replacement for $69 and Samsung for $79. So at the end of the day, which of these two phones is better? Well, in terms of the design, I would give this to the S23 and the same goes for the display. However, when it comes to the battery life, I would say these phones tie. And then when it comes to the camera, I give this to the iPhone 14. And then finally, when it comes to the performance and overall longevity, this again goes to the iPhone 14. So as you can see, we have a tie so far. And looking at the scoreboard, uh, you can almost say that the iPhone 14 is better for content creation, where the S23 is better for content consumption. But there is still one category left, and that is operating system. Now, comparing the operating systems could be a full video on its own, but it comes down to the following. iOS is ultimately more stable and smooth to use, where Android allows for more customization and freedom in terms of apps. As a content creator who is already in the Apple ecosystem uh, with my AirPods as well as my Apple Watch and someone who uses my phone for both work as well as personal use, reliability is key. And this is why for me, the iPhone 14 and iOS is ultimately going to be the slightly better choice. But I do say slightly for a reason. I think Samsung have done very well with the S23. And if they keep this up, Apple needs to watch their back. Anyway guys, let me know if you have any questions at all. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, do you agree or do you disagree? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, if you haven't seen them yet, I highly recommend watching my iPhone 14 Pro Max versus the S23 Ultra comparison video, as well as my first 10 things to do on the S23. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.